My dear respected brothers and sisters in Islam, Alhamdulillah, it's a great blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He has given me and you the ability and tawfiq to participate in this gathering and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make this gathering a source of guidance for all of us and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make this gathering one of the means of our entry into Jannah. You know brother that today's topic is a very emotional topic and this is something that I want you to talk about for a very very long time but I think that today's occasion is a very suitable occasion. Before I say anything I want to ask you a question. Have you ever seen a small baby? A small baby. You know we all were there once upon a time. We all were babies once upon a time. But you ever seen a small baby? How much does it need assistance? A baby totally depends upon the assistance of other people. And that's how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala creates a person. But the question is why? Why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala creates a person in such a manner? Allah creates a person in such a manner because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants him to remember his origin all the time. A baby cannot turn himself. A baby cannot clean himself. If he wets his nappy, he has to cry and he has to alert his mother. And then his mother comes and then he cleans, she cleans the baby. She takes off the nappy. You know, if a baby is hungry and if he wants to drink, he cannot go and fetch a drink for himself. He has to alert his mother until his mother comes and feeds him. This is how, how dependent a baby is. This is what our origin is. But then after a while, the same baby, he becomes older. And when he becomes older, he starts thinking that he is someone special. And he forgets about his origin, where he comes from. And the more older he gets, the more independent he regards himself. He starts thinking that he is it. He is the man, forgetting about his origin. And then after a while, a time comes when the same baby, he becomes so old that he starts going to the gym. And he starts going to the gym and he starts pumping the iron there. And then he starts taking the horse growth hormones. And then he starts to bloat. And then he thinks he's someone special. And then you don't see him in the masjid. You see him outside on the streets. He's doing something that he thinks is important than coming into the masjid and reading his salah. Because he thinks he's special. And then after a while, a time comes when the same person, he becomes really old. If he reaches that age, he becomes really old and he becomes really weak. He walks with a stick. And then he wakes up in the morning and every single bone in his body hurts. He's so weak. He used to pump iron, but now he wakes up in the morning and every single bone in his body hurts. And then after a while a time comes when he lies in his bed and he is so old that he cannot move without the assistance of other people. Can you understand the connection here? He cannot move now without the help of other assistants, other people's assistants. This is how Allah created us. First, he made us dependent. And then he made us independent. And then a time will come when he will make you dependent again. So a time comes that he lies in his bed and he cannot move. And he sees Malakul Maut. He sees the angel of death sitting upon his head. Waiting to take the ruh out of his body. To take the soul out of his body. He's sitting here and he's waiting. And this is the only person who can see his malakul maut. This is the only person who can see this angel. Everyone around him is crying, but they cannot see the angel. This is the only person who can see the angel and now he can see the reality. You know, very recently, I went to visit a brother. He was seriously ill in the hospital. And everybody thought that he was going to die. Everybody thought, including doctors, 
they thought that he was going to die. But then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala granted him shifa, Allah granted him recovery. He came back home, I went to meet him. You know the first thing he said to me? He said to me, Mulana, it's not easy to die. It's very difficult dying. But the reality is, everyone, you and me, we all are going to die. لو كانت الدنيا تدوم لأهلها لكان محمد فيها مخلدون. If this dunya were to allow anyone to live forever and ever, it would be Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. But if he has tasted from the cup of death, then we all are going to die. كل نفس زائقة الموت. Every single one of us, we all are going to die. أينما تكونوا يدركم الموت ولو كنتم في بروج مشيدة run 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 wherever you want to run when your time comes your death will come and get you even if you are in a fortified fortress. Ali رضي الله تعالى عنه said الموت ليس منه الفوت. موت is something death is something that I can never ever escape. إن فررتم منه أدرككم if you run away from it it will come and get you. وَإِنْ أَقَمْتُمْ لَهُ أَخَذَكُمْ If you stand against it, if you try to fight it, it will overpower you, it will overcome you. So he said to me, Mulana, He said to me, Mulana, it's really difficult dying. Prophet Wasallam told us you should go and visit the graveyard. And he said, you should go and visit the graveyard because it reminds you of your death. But when you go and visit the graveyard, what do you see? What do you see on the tombstones? What do you see on the tombstones? Stones. It will tell you that this person dies in 1825 or 1850 or 1875 or even in 1900. This means that this person, he spends more time in his qabr than he spends it outside on the earth. This is the reality. A time comes. We are so deluded by the dunya that we never think that we will ever die. We will ever going to die. But a time comes. He is lying in his bed and he sees the malakul maut. He sees the angel of death. And then if he is a good person then Allah will give him tawfiq. And he will recite the kalima la ilaha illallah muhammadur rasulullah. But if he's not, then he leaves this dunya. And when he leaves this dunya, the very same person who used to think that he is it, he is the man, he is someone special. Now he cannot even bathe himself. Other people will come and they will give him the bath. And the ulama have said, That the water should neither be too cold nor too hot. When you give him the bath, the water should neither be too cold nor too hot. You know why? Because the mayyat feels the temperature. Mayyat feels it. He cannot tell it, but he feels it. Just imagine it, brother. It's going to happen to every single one of us. People will dig a ditch for us, six feet deep, and then they will put us in our graves. And then they will put sand on our faces, and then they will walk away. We will be in our cover all alone on our own. Everyone will walk away. Everything will walk away. Your muscles, your looks, your cars, your mobile phones, your parents, your children, your family, your siblings, your friends. They love you, but they walk away. Prophet wasallam said, there is only one thing that will remain with him. The only thing that will remain with him is his actions. If you have done good actions, Prophet wasallam said, if you have done good actions, your actions will come and save you on that day. You will be placed in your qabr and Prophet wasallam said, your qabr can become one of the gardens from the gardens of Jannah. You will be placed in your qabr and the qabr will say to you, Ahlam wa sahlan marhaba, welcome. 
Out of all the people walking on the face of my earth, all, out of all the people walking on the face of this earth, you were most beloved to me. And now you have come to me, you will see me how I will deal with you. And then Prophet wasallam said that it will open itself up until the eye can see as far as it can see. And then the, a door of Jannah will be opened for him. But then there is another person. He lived his life the way he wanted to live his life. He, he, he did whatever he wanted to do. He womanized, he dined and he whined and he thought that he was going to kick 50. And when he will kick 50, then he will grow a beard. Then he will start coming to the masjid. He will start remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he will do tawbah. But there is no guarantee. He, dis he died before he would kick 50. And now he is placed in his qabr. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, when such a person is placed in his qabr, the Qabr will say to that person, out of all the people walking on the face of this earth, you were most despised in my eyes. You were most despicable in my eyes. And then Prophet ﷺ said that that Qabr will squeeze him. And Prophet Muhammad ﷺ thrusted his fingers of one hand into the other like this. And he said his ribs will go into one another like this. That's how it will squeeze him. And then Prophet Wasallam said that the only thing that can suffice you on that day, the only thing that can safeguard you and save you on that day, is your good actions. Qabr is such a big thing, my brothers. We go to the graveyard all the time. We never think about it. Let me tell you a story of a Sahabi. Who is that Sahabi? What is the virtue of that Sahabi? His name is Sa'ad bin Ma'az radiyallahu ta'ala anhu. He was known amongst the Insar as the Abu Bakr of Medina. There was Abu Bakr of Mecca. He was known as the Abu Bakr of Medina. When Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam called him like Abu Bakr would reply, he would reply him. When he passed away, people lifted his janazah. And his janazah was very light. So the munafikun, the hypocrites, they started saying that this person, his janazah is light because he has no weight by Allah. He has no weight by Allah. And Prophet wasallam said, no, this is not the reason. His mayyat is light, his janazah is light because 70,000 angels have descended upon the heavens, from the heavens, to lift his janazah. That's why his janazah is light. When he passed away, Jibreel alayhi salatu wasalam came to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. He said, Ya Rasulullah, who passed away? Who is that person for whom the doors of Jannah have been opened? Wahtazza arsha rabbahu and the arsh of our Rabb, the arsh of our master has begun to shake. Who is that person who passed away? Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam ran. And he found out that Sa'ad bin Ma'az who passed away. Such a Sahabi. When they went to bury him, they put his body in the grave. And Prophet was standing upon the grave. All of a sudden, Prophet started saying, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, thrice. And the Sahaba said it behind him. And then he said, Subhanallah, 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 thrice. And Sahaba said behind him. And then the complexion of his face changed. He became red. And Sahaba said, Ya Rasulullah, what happened to you? Why are you so worried? And he said that the qabr of Sa'ad bin Ma'az, who was about to squeeze Sa'ad. It was about to squeeze Sa'ad. But if there is anyone that that qabr will not squeeze, it is Sa'ad bin Ma'az. This is a Sahabi upon his demise. 70,000 angels came down to lift his janazah. The arsh of Rabb, the arsh of our master, has begun to shake. He was the Siddiq of Medina. The doors of Jannah were open for him. And when he was placed in his qabr, his qabr was about to squeeze him. What will happen to us? 
We spend our days and nights committing sins. And we know that we are committing sins. We transgress against the laws of Allah. It's not like we don't know we are transgressing against the laws. We know it. But we do it. Usman bin Ghani radiyallahu, Usman Ghani radiyallahu ta'ala anhu, when he would, pass, he would pass by the graveyard, he would stand there, he would cry. He would cry for hours. And he would say, this is the first stage. You pass that stage, you will pass the rest. You fail that stage, nothing can help you in the later stages. Our Iman is such that we get so deluded by the dunya that we believe that we're never going to die. Never going to die. Sahaba's Iman was such that Ma'az bin Jabal radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he came to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he said, Ya Rasulullah, he came to Rasulullah, he said, Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Kayfa asbahta ya Ma'az? Oh Ma'az, how did you find yourself in the morning? And he said, Mu'minan haqqan. I found myself in the morning as a true believer. And Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Likulli qawlin haqiqa, for every statement there is a dalil. For every statement there is a proof. What is your proof? How do you know that you were a true believer in the morning? And he said, Ya Rasulullah, there is not even a single morning when I wake up believing that I will reach the evening. There's not even a single evening that I believe that I will reach to the next morning. And then he said something amazing which exemplifies the Iman of Sahaba. He said, Ya Rasulullah, I have never taken a step believing that I will be able to take the next step. This is the Iman. This is what we call Iman. And by now, mashallah, most of you, maybe all of you have already realized that why I have chosen this topic today. A very dear brother of mine, a very dear friend of mine, most of you know him very well. Every Jummah we used to see him here. And more than anything else, he was a very nice brother. He always had a smile on his face. I'm talking about brother Rifzal. He Just had a heart attack on Sunday and he passed away. He was in his early 40s. Mashallah, he belongs to the, one of the most well-known families of Edinburgh, financially rich people. But his time came and he gone. he's gone. I was in his janazah yesterday, in the mosque, in Adil Mosque. I was standing there and I was thinking that this is a situation and most of us, we are not here for the very first time. We have come to this place before and we have read janazahs before. And we have gone to the Qabristans before, we have gone to the graveyards before, and we have buried our loved ones before. But we all know very well that as soon as we jump back into our cars, we're going to forget everything about it. Everything. As if this is not for me. This janazah is not for me. This cover is not for me. It's never going to happen to me. If I ask any one of you, any one of you right now that brother is it possible that we come back tonight in the same masjid and read your janazah you die tonight and we come back to the same masjid and we read your janazah every single one of you will tell me la ilaha illallah this can happen there is no guarantee i can die tonight every single one of us will say this but you know what is the biggest problem that we are facing including myself the biggest disease that we have in our heart we don't say it with our tongue but it's there in our heart we don't believe that we are going to die. I'm going to go back to my wife. I'm going to go back to my children. I'm going to go back to my family. I've already plans for the month of Ramadan. I've already plans for the month of Eid. I've already plans for the Hajj. I will see my kids growing up. I will send them to uni. I will marry them off. I will play with their grandkids for some crazy reasons. We know that we are going to do all these things. We think that we are never going to die. And this is the biggest shaitan that we have in our hearts. Including myself. This is the biggest shaitan. Allah is showing us signs every single day. Teenagers are passing away. Children are passing away. Babies are passing away. Elders are passing away. When are we going to wake up? When are we going to realize that our death is very, very close? It's like a breath you take in, but there is no guarantee it comes out. There is no guarantee. And yesterday I've seen a shroud. Have you seen a shroud? Most definitely all of you have seen a shroud. Are there any pockets on the shroud? 
Are there any pockets on the shroud? There are no pockets. No one takes his home with him. No one takes his wife with him. No one takes his children with him. No one. This is the end of every single one of us. Our qabr is our property. That's what we own. A meter by two meter. That's the only thing we own. This is the end. Brothers, mashallah, you are intelligent people. So explain it to me. I don't understand this. I'm not as intelligent as you are. So please explain it to me. What is the purpose of our existence now? What is the purpose of our existence? How your home will benefit you? How your degrees will benefit you? How your businesses will benefit you? This is going to happen to every single one of us. We will be placed in our qabr. Just like brother Ifdal, he was placed in his qabr yesterday. And everyone was there. All of his family was there. But ask them, ask them, did they walk away after they bury him? Yes, they did. They love him. They love him so much that they will remember him in his du'as. And I will remember him in my du'as. He was a dear friend. I will always remember him in my du'as. But he's there alone on his own. I'm not there with him. His family is not there with him. We will be put in our graves on our own. We will be there on our own. And then everyone will walk away. And the only thing that will remain with me and the only thing that will remain with you is the salah that you used to read. The, the hajj they used to wake up. The zikr of Allah that you used to do. The recitation of Quran that you used to do. This is your property that will remain with you. My request to all of your brothers, and this is, on this I will conclude here now. My request to all of your brothers. I beg you, don't allow shaitan to deceive you any further. Don't let shaitan deceive you any further. Now don't worry, there is still time. We will make toba. We will turn to Allah. There is still time. There is still time. I will become religious. Wallahi, there is no guarantee. The day angel came to put soul in your body, Wallahi, on the same day, exactly by the second, it's already been decided when you are going to die. It may be tomorrow. It may be next week, it may be next month. Maybe we won't be able to make it to the month of Ramadan. We won't make it to Eid. The next Eid, Hajj, we don't know. We don't know. We have to do so much. There is so much improvement that we have to do. We have so much sickness and disease and haram and makruhat in our lives. And today the biggest reality is, the most unfortunate reality is that we justify our sins. We do justify our sins. Wallahi brother, the death of our beloved who is lying down in his qabr and we lay him down with our own hands and he's there. If this does not wake me up, then inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajun. Nothing can wake me up. Nothing can wake me up. He was our friend and he was your friend. But if his death cannot wake us up, then nothing will wake us up. So I sincerely ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us understanding. May Allah give us the ability and tawfiq that we live for the sake of Allah. We live for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we come out of the life of entertainment. And we come out of the life in which we live just by the day and we don't think about the future. And we don't think about our qabr. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us the people of thought. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us the people of iman. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us the source of inspiration. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us among those who always remember his death. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us among those who always prepare for their death and for their qabr. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep us united in this dunya. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reunite us in the hereafter. Wa akhru da'wana alhamdulillahi wa